Hello, my name is Tam Szuzyński. I will be translating this webinar made by my colleagues Jacek Berkowski and Marcin Kłomski. While you watch during this webinar, we will have a live chat window open so we can answer all your questions while you watch. So don't hesitate and we will answer your questions in turn. Thank you. First, uh, what we will need to update is TSC Builder on your PC and also that project that you will be building on a TSC also will need to be updated. To start the process of updating, go to your uh, TSC Builder, go to Help, check for updates and start your update. After the update is complete, you can start by uh, going into Tools and then selecting Enta TSC OS. Make sure you have a USB RS cable with the 5 pin connector, LAN cable, and the SD card reader. Connect your uh, RS USB 5 pin connector on the right hand side as instructed in the information that will be given to you when you uh, do the update and uh, continue the process. Also make sure that you're connected to uh, the local area network on your uh, TSC and your uh, laptop. After finishing this update, you can again go into Tools, Update and TSC STM, and after selecting it, you will be prompted for to choose a correct port and move your USB RS 5 pin connector to the left hand side. If you keep it on the right hand side, as instructed in the first uh, update, it will not work. So just move it to the left and you're going to be good to go. After this final update, we're almost done. Now we have our uh, TSC builder updated. We have our uh, IntTSE OS updated and STE. Now what we need to do is create build a project because the old one is not going to work. Make sure you have a SD card reader on your uh, laptop and you're connected to the IntTSE on your local network. Build a new project in TSE Builder. Take out the card, insert it in that TSE, restart it and you're ready to go. Now, once the, all the updates are complete, you're ready for all new features that TSE has to offer. We can start with uh, a new macro called uh, QuickArm and a default user. QuickArm works the same way as it uh, does on a regular keypad. Uh, you can go in a keypad, select quick arm, and then it will not ask you for a password when uh, you select the uh, arm or disarm or any uh, button you program on a TC builder. And uh, also there is a default user that is a new feature also that can be uh, programmed without the use of quick arm. So it will give you more options to uh, be more specific than uh, quick arm as uh, you can select only one button that will not ask you for a password and the other one will ask you for a password not all of them together like uh, quick arm so you can select a default user that will allow you for example to arm the system in partition number one and the second button to arm the system in partition number two that uh, will ask you for the password. And this will give you uh, a lot more control with who is arming the system and who is disarming the system. The same feature can be used with uh, blocking zones and activating outputs. All you have to do is select a default user in uh, blocking or activating outputs as quick as that. And also the quick note to uh, select which default user you would like uh, this control be operated by. You need to do that on your uh, TSC keypad. When you go into a menu, 
all the way in the bottom, there's a default user. And when you open that menu, it will show you, it will give you an option to choose a default user that will be used for those specific buttons that you've uh, programmed with uh, quick control. Here we'll wait a second for uh, Jack and Matthew to uh, catch up with us. And uh, we'll show you exactly where to select the quick user in our macros. Here you can see Jack and uh, Matthew opening up the macros and uh, this is where you would select your uh, partitions and uh, default users for those partitions if you'd like to use them. With this new update, we also have a new widget called Power Consumption and Power Consumption Light. The widget will display power consumption from the device you selected, for example, ASW210 in either watts or kilowatts. As Martin is showing, this is where you would select the output and the format, which is going to be shown on the display, kilowatts or watts. Using this widget, you can use it for uh, thermostats. All you have to do is just select the input and it will show you the analog output of that thermostat. There is a new option, actually added option, with the widget thermostat. Before you were uh, not able to change the temperature of the thermostat uh, only with the, user, with the user code. Now you don't have to do that. In your Deload X program under thermostat, on the bottom right hand corner, you can uh, check off default user and after selecting it, you will never be asked again for the password when changing the temperature. Another new feature of the, this update is uh, the ability to connect the TSC keypad with the, on the KNX bus. So you will be receiving additional function on your uh, widgets, which will allow you to control devices on the KNX bus uh, with the use of the TSC keypad. Widgets like power consumptions and uh, temperature also received an option for the inputs to receive data from the KNX bus. Here, Martin will show you where you select the input for these two widgets. And you can choose either KNX or 
Integra panel. And we've also managed to get another function from the KNX bus as a status widget that will allow us to uh, monitor any type of device on the KNX bus by the use of uh, TCP IP communication, by the telegram as inputs or outputs. Uh, the information you're able to receive is on uh, uh, power consumption and the temperature control widget and also in this specific widget that just shows you the status. And uh, this is where you would go by uh, programming the TCP IP and the telegram information. And this is not everything that was added on with the update for the SC and the KNX bus. Now we have a new functions with the regulator. Group addresses have been added to the new functions of the regulator. Now you are able to control and see information on your uh, TSC keypad directly from the KNX bus. Also with the regulator, there are buttons that you can use and that can be programmed on the KNX bus with the use of a micro that you can program. And here, Jack is going to show you how to program such a macro. Pretty much there's a new function in macros called Telegram KNX IP. And that's where uh, you would go to program your groups, incoming and outgoing information coming from the KNX bus. Okay, now since we've configured all our widgets and we've configured all our devices, all our gates and telegrams are ready to go. TSC is ready to receive all of our information. Jack is showing you exactly where to go on your TSC builder and select the target and open in properties. And this is where you will need to configure your uh, TSC keypad to be connected with the end KNX bus. After opening target and selecting KNX net IP, choose edit section and select either tunneling for IP and port or routing. Depending on the KNX device you have on your in your location, that's the connection that you will be choosing. Also, uh, your program that you need to be using for a uh, program and configure KNX gate is a uh, ETS. And also on the same page, there's an open weather map section where you can add the uh, weather map key. Before you had to do that at the keypad, we had a lot of requests asking us for to change that feature and add it into the TSC builder. So uh, the long key can be just copied and pasted right into it. So that's what we did. And now all you have to do is copy and paste it here, build a project, and uh, you won't have to do anything at the keypad anymore. The information will show up on your widget automatically. Now we are going to switch from the TSC Builder display to uh, show you how it uh, physically will look like on the keypad itself. So one second.
Okay, this is the project that we've uh, finished building. On the left uh, bottom side, we have uh, two macros already programmed into arm and disarm. And uh, uh, Martin will show you exactly where to uh, put in the uh, default user. So as I said before, you go to menu, and go in the, all the way on the bottom, you have a default user. And this is where you would turn on the default user and turn them off. So if uh, in the deload uh, program, the default user is selected and in a TEC builder, it's selected for a specific widget, it will uh, not ask you for a password. And in uh, this situation, Matthew just pushed in the uh, arm button and uh, it shows that uh, one of the uh, zones was uh, open. So he just turns it off and now it's uh, ready to be armed. So that one, that button has been programmed with the default uh, user and it did not ask him for a password. And on this screen, it shows him the uh, power consumption of the ASW210, 13.6 watts. And you can uh, use the also widget to control the uh, the input of the ASW210. And here, the new feature of our widget of the thermostat, it opens up and you can uh, change the values on the right and the left hand side, as you see. And here also, you have an option uh, with the default user. If you select it on, the, whenever you change the temperature, it uh, will uh, ask you if, if the default user is not turned on, then it will ask you for a password every time you change the temperature. If it's uh, selected, then all you will have to do is just change the temperature without uh, any questions. So the first temperature uh, widget was on the left and that one uh, had the default user. The second one does not. And whenever uh, Martin will uh, change the temperature, we'll ask him for the password. This is helpful since uh, if you have kids in a house, it, uh, they will not be able to change the temperature, only you. And they would be able, for example, to arm the system without the code, with the default user. So it's an additional feature that will come in handy. Here, it shows you how KNX, KNX was uh, is connected and how you control the buttons and how it shows you the current draw from the regulator and on the right hand side there is a button that you can call control devices on the KNX bus. And the KNX bus will also show you the actual status of the device after uh, selecting it in the uh, uh, settings. So the icon will show you if it's on or off and uh, and the percentage of how uh, how high the illumination on the bulb is. So Matthew just uh, changed the values of the regulator, not on the TSC keypad, but on his uh, 
program on EPS program of that bulb on on the light I mean on the Canix bus and you can see it changed by itself and it shows you uh, actual uh, reading from that uh, from the bulb And now the new and most exciting new feature for our uh, NTSC keypad is uh, ability for it to connect with the SIP using SIP protocol with the intercoms that uh, use the same protocol. You can either choose for the uh, in intercom to be the server or the our keypad to be the server. And uh, we will show you in uh, one moment where to make that selection. First, when you open up the TC Builder, as Jack is pointing out, you open up your target, select settings, and then when the window opens up, it will show you the name of your keypad, the MAC address, SIP phone number, SIP group number, and SIP server password. In our case, we only have one NTSC. Its name is uh, 100, and uh, it's not assigned to any groups. If you had any more uh, NTSC keypads, it would be under that line with another MAC address, and you would also uh, give it a name, uh, 101, 102, 103, and so forth. In the column SIP group number, would be a place where you assign the group. So if you had three keypads, on the left on the SIP group number it will be 101 102 103 and in the group it would be 100 for example and the second keypad would also be in a group that's 100 and a third one also in 100 and that would mean if somebody would be uh, pressing a button a doorbell on the intercom all the keypads would be ringing at the same time so the group number would be the same for all the keypads and the uh, SIP phone number would be different for each TASI and on the last column, there is a SIP server password, which uh, we don't use since uh, we are going to be setting up our test C as a server. You would only use this password if you wanted your intercom to be the server. Now that our uh, keypad SIP configuration is complete, we will be setting up uh, SIP server as our NTSC. The configuration here is pretty simple. You can just close this window and you can open up SIP server and you will be presented with the SIP server address. The IP address that you input here is the same IP address that you would get from your NTSC keypad. Once you do that, this will automatically mean that the uh, NTSC is now your server and the intercom will connect to it. In the event that you have more NTSC keypads, one will be master and that one master will have an IP address that is the same as the SIP server IP address here that we've inputted on the, in the TSC builder. All of the other TSCs will have different physical IP addresses, but they will be in the same project and all of them will have the same SIP server address of just that one particular master SIP server. And it's worth mentioning that if you are using more than one TSC, you will uh, need to create a project 
and that one project that you create in that TSC builder will be the project for all of your TSC uh, keypads under uh, synchronization on the uh, tree on the left hand side of the TSC builder you can have different uh, SD cards for different uh, keypads so everything ties in together so now this completes our uh, setup of uh, in the TSC builder of the uh, master SIP uh, server which is going to be our keypad and we'll now we'll be closing those windows and opening up a widget intercom and we will be configuring it to connect to our intercom when the intercom widget opens up you can scroll your mouse over the widget over the word intercom right click in here you will see that we've programmed uh, two intercoms acuvox and uh, 2n we will uh, look at the acuvox so in your case you would just go hit a plus in our case we'll just uh, open up the properties by clicking the little uh, pencil when that opens up you get another window with the name of your uh, intercom the door phone sid number and the sip server password those two fields are uh, two of the most important ones to connect to the intercom the sip number and the password if you have those two field fields uh, filled out correctly in your intercom and it's and your intercom is connected to a local area network you should be able to connect in our example door phone sip number is 101 and that's the same number you would have programmed on your intercom and uh, SIP server password it's the same password that you would have in your intercom underneath that there is a door open key in this field you would fill out number one for example the same number one as in your keypad and we'll go over that in our field be instead of just putting number one you have to push put the uh, hash one for uh, it for our system to work and open the intercom door underneath that there is a video url and this field is used for uh, intercom when you when selecting intercom on our tsc keypad just by pressing it and if you have this fi field filled out with a url address the video will start up and you will be able to see what's happening in front of your intercom if for example you do not have to have this field filled out that means only that uh, after hitting the intercom widget the video will stay closed and only after hitting talk button the video will start the connection and it will display who's standing in front of the intercom this video feed field is also uh, very interesting since uh, you don't have to be putting the video feed from the intercom in here if uh, you have security cameras and they have a better angle on your door or wherever the intercom is installed and you choose to uh, display a feed from your uh, security cameras you can just input the uh, rstp feed here and whenever the widget is opened up it will display the feed from your security cameras now we have everything set up on our TSC builder side. We have SIP server set up with the correct IP and the port and the widget with the door SIP number and the SIP server password to connect to our intercom. Now we're going to show you how it all works on our TSC keypad. Okay, 
So now we're switching to the TASI keypad display. And here we have two intercoms connected on the right hand side. The first one, this is the one that has the URL address of the uh, link, video link, and it will display your video immediately. And the second widget, the second intercom does not. So the, after hitting, just by hitting the intercom on the first intercom, it will display a video immediately with the link. And the second one, it doesn't do that. It only does that after somebody rings, then the video comes up. And of course, you have an uh, option to open the door of the intercom on the bottom right hand side. So now on the first intercom, we press the doorbell button. And as soon as the doorbell started ringing, the video came up and it's uh, showing who's standing in front of the intercom. And this is the intercom with the link filled in. And then you disconnect from it. There is another feature for this intercom widget, and that is the connection to the intercom. You just have to make sure that the intercom that you're connecting to has the uh, ability or function of accepting incoming connections. Once you're assured that the intercom has this function, on our intercom widget, you can hit the green telephone button, and in that case, once you have that uh, accepting incoming connections feature on, the button will switch to a microphone and it will give you an option to listen before connecting to the intercom of someone who's standing in front of the door before actual making the connection. So you can listen on to their connection before actually answering them. If you decide to answer, just hit the microphone button again and you will establish connection. Also, in the widget, on the bottom side of the screen, there is a volume button that controls the volume of the TASC keypad. Worth noting is also that uh, you have to be connected with the intercom to adjust the volume. If you are not connected, then that volume button adjusts the speed of the connection between the TSC keypad and the intercom. So in short, while you're talking to somebody on the intercom, only then you can adjust the volume. You can also adjust the uh, amplitude of the microphone while you're talking on the TSC uh, keypad. And to find that option, you need to go into the settings of the TSC keypad and in the settings menu, you will, in the volume tab, you will find the amplitude of the microphone and you can adjust it differently. The adjustment is different for every manufacturer of the intercom and you will have to uh, play around with the settings and find uh, if raising the volume works better for you or lowering it. In uh, this presentation, we've decided to uh, hook up two intercoms, 2N and Acuvox. And since we were playing with them, these two manufacturers are uh, the easiest to set up the connection to our uh, NTSC keypad as a server and uh, require very minimal amount of uh, setup.
Okay, so now we're gonna connect to Acuvox Intercom. All you have to do is go on your browser, log in, In the case of Akuvox, we have different types of accounts that we can use. Number one usually is set up with the cloud service where the uh, owner can uh, connect wirelessly to it. And account number two that can be used for our purposes. In our situation, we're going to be just using one account. So account number one and underneath it, we can enable the account, give it name, which is going to be 101. And as we remember, our SAP server on a TSC is 100. So that's how this is going to be set up. And near the bottom on the primary SAP server, this is where we're going to input the IP server of the TSC with the correct port. Also, on that same page, you will have to select the transfer protocol, which you will need to select. It's going to be near the bottom of the screen, and my friends will show it in a second. It's called a UDP, so that's what you need to select. And also, while we are on the same page, the account that is set up, account number one and number two, in this case of Acuvox Intercoms, works in parallel so the signal that is being sent it goes out in the cloud and into our system if it's set up this way not all intercoms work the same way some have this feature some don't so it's it works different so just be aware of it and on this page of all the accounts that's all you need to set up as long as you have all 101 names and uh, the password and the password here is the same password that you used in the intercom widget in the TC Builder. And that will be it for this page. So in conclusion, in this Acuvox, on this page, all you have to do is select the account, enable the account, uh, give it name, 101, add a password that you used in the uh, intercom widget, uh, input the IP server with the correct port and select UDP protocol. After this page, we're going to go and select our uh, door button and we'll show you where that is. And while we write, it was not easy to find. Every manufacturer is different, every menu is different. Once we're done with the Acuvox, we'll go through 2N Intercom and you will see how different it is.
Okay, so on the next page we're going to be looking at is the button that will ring from our intercom to the TSC keypad. Here in the Acuvox, we're going to find it in uh, intercom or actually account basic. Oh, hold on a second. Intercom basic. And this is where you're going to find the phone number that you've programmed in that TSC builder in uh, SAP configuration. Not in the widget, but in the configuration. That's where the intercom is going to call and uh, let the TSC know to wake up. Now, if you have multiple TSC keypads, the first one, and you have them in the group, and first one that's going to answer will take uh, the control of the intercom and none of the other ones will uh, be allowed to access the connection anymore. Only after that person hangs up, then you will be able to connect with a different keypad. Now that we configured the doorbell on the intercom, we're going to start looking at the intercom to uh, open the door for us. And we will be able to find that in the intercoms, relays, Acuvox has uh, two relays built in, but we're going to be only using one. So what we need to uh, make sure that it's selected is the option DTMF1 number, and we're going to give it one digit to open the door. And that digit will be number one. And it's the same digit that we've used to program the widget intercom on our TSC builder. The only difference is that Acuvox we have number one and in our widget we have hash one. And now we've completed setting up the Acuvox intercom. We gave it address, we uh, gave it the call number, and we set up a relay. And now we're gonna go and do the same thing on the two and intercom. And you will see how different the menu is. On the T2N intercom, you go to services. Here, under phone, you're gonna find the phone ID number, which is 102, and the domain of that intercom. 102 is obviously 102 because 101 was our uh, audio box. And of course, the password is gonna, we're gonna take from our widget. That's all under SAP1. And here, this is where you register your intercom with this SAP server. And not all of them will show you the registration that it con successfully connected to the server. Uh, you were still able to do that on our Acubox before. And it does show you all the way on top also the the connection was successful and it, it is registered. Now that we've addressed the uh, intercom and gave it the phone ID number, we will need to program the button on the intercom. It works different for every uh, intercom. In the case of 2N, we will need to create a user and assign him the number for the button, which is 100 in our case. And after a user is created, we go to a different menu, buttons, and then in that menu, we select the user. In our case, that would be TSC. And the next thing we will need to program is the relay, which is in switches. All we have to give it is code one. And we're done with the setup of the uh, 2N intercom. 
So it's pretty easy to connect any intercom as long as it's using SIP protocol. And to wrap up, this is uh, what we need to do to make this work. In short, first update TSE Builder, then update all your firmwares on your TSE keypad using tools, uh, update OS, update STM. After that, second part would be uh, to configure your uh, SIP server on the TSE Builder. After that, configure your widget, input all the information as from the intercoms, from the Acuvox or 2N in our case, and then go to uh, the intercoms and configure them. There is one more very important feature that we would like to uh, mention, and that is the uh, ability to uh, remove and insert SD card safely from our uh, NTSC keypad. We had some uh, errors come up when uh, the card was removed while the reader was powered on. So now there is a additional feature in the menu and under settings near the bottom where it will disable the reader and safely, so you can safely remove the SD card from the reader. And here it is. Martin will show you where you can find that feature. And it is called uninstall, but you just click that and this will disable the reader. So you can safely remove the SD card. Also, when there is a trouble on the system and you open up the C keypad, this uh, menu will automatically come up because it will most likely mean that you want to remove the SD card. So that's when uh, you would just use uninstall button and safely remove the card.